So man, we're gonna keep rolling, man. Take care of y'all body, man. Come what out and buy week. What else? Keep what winning. What else? Man. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, th family on three, family on three, one, two, three. Family. Just striving for a level of consistency. Hopefully you guys feel better, hopefully you guys feel healthier, and we're ready to work and get something done. Let's focus on the Colts. Bye, 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 no more. The Titans are fresh off the break and ready for another AFC South battle with the Colts. GM John Robinson previews Sunday's showdown. And the future home of the ball club is one step closer to reality as the organization announces a commitment from Mayor Cooper. Plus, five, end zone, touchdown, Titans! Oh, they slipped the 35-year-old out of the backfield. Tight end Delaney Walker returns to retire as a Titan. Don't go anywhere. Titans All Access starts now. First division win, feels good. Gotta keep going, man. Derrick Henry, the stiff arm, throws a man down. Get you some. Chig Akakwo, touchdown, Tyson! Jeffrey Simmons gets him all the way. Caught. Westbrook Akita, how about a little Baker row? Intercepted by the Titans. Throws ball up in the air, intercepted fire. Welcome back to Bet MGM Studio. We say welcome back because the bye is over. The bye is over, back to business. 12 weeks to go as Titans All Access is back on with you with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and we are excited that the Titans have another AFC South game against the Indianapolis Colts this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. But we were really excited this past Monday when the announcement was made that the Tennessee Titans have an agreement with the city to build a new stadium. Now, Mike, I have a lot of questions about this. Can you answer these questions for me? No, but okay. I know who can. Burke Nihill is the Titans president and CEO, and we don't have all the questions answered, but we've got some that we know are on your mind. So here's part of my sit down with Burke Nihill on Titans All Access. We're picturing a facility of about 60,000 capacity. It would be an enclosed facility. And I think what is probably exciting news for Titans fans, this lease would keep the Titans in Nashville and Tennessee for another generation. We're looking at a 30 year lease for this new facility. So just for specifics, where exactly is the new stadium set to be built? It would be built on our current stadium campus. So if our stadium today is, is up towards the riverfront, the stadium would be built further back towards the east and between the current stadium and the highway. Every city that has built a new enclosed stadium has gotten a Super Bowl. You're saying that would be your expectation for our new stadium? Yeah, absolutely. That would be my expectation. The NFL came to Nashville in 2019. And frankly, they, they took a chance when they brought the draft here. Only major cities had gotten uh, the NFL's biggest events up until that point. And there's no question that Nashville delivered and in spades. And so those same people, the, the events programmers uh, for the NFL, uh, they took notice. And there's no doubt in my mind that the NFL would come to Nashville with a Super Bowl. All right, so the number one question that I've gotten from Titans fans outside of, are we going to host the Super Bowl, is what about PSLs? What do you expect the role of PSLs to be in the building of the new stadium? For a long time, PSLs have been a reality of construction projects of this scale. And so PSLs will be a part of this project as well. That said, it's been critically important to Amy. It's been critically important to the organization as a whole that we find a way to honor existing PSL holders. What that looks like, uh, we're still working through some of the details, but we are committed to giving every PSL holder a credit to purchase a new PSL in a new building that is in line with their original investment and their original PSL. Again, a lot of details to be worked through, and we know how important it is to communicate with our existing PSL holders as soon as we have all of those details, and we will very, very soon. So how soon do we start construction? <laughs> well. You know, to not count our chickens. Again, there is this there is this city process sure. that, that will be ongoing. And so that will be the focus over the next few months is both the legislative process and the community outreach and, and, and input gathering process. If all of that were to go according to plan, next fall is probably the earliest that construction would actually be. All right, so if that's when construction starts, when will it be completed? We're not going to put an arbitrary date on completion that would ultimately result in a construction process that is hurried or a design process that is hurried. 
And so if that means that ultimately the first games and first events aren't hosted at the stadium until 27 and not 26, we will take a responsible approach to managing that construction schedule. If you want to see more of my interview with Burke Nihill, I invite you to go to TennesseeTitans.com, the official website of your Tennessee Titans. And I can promise you there's a lot more where that came from. Well, I'm definitely going to check that out. But I'm also going to check out more Titans All Access because Big Jeff, he's this week's Nissan Insider. He's lurking around the corner. And how about the big screen game? Titans have run the screens well. We'll go beneath the surface with Dave McGinnis when we come back. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Now, Mike, historically, the Titans haven't been the best at the screen game. No, they have not. <laughs> but right now, the Titans have it going in the screen game. And as we go beneath the surface with Coach Dave McGinnis, he shows us why the Titans' screens are going big. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. All right, today, beneath the surface, we're going to look at an excellent screen game that's been developing throughout the season with the Tennessee Titans. First screen we have, this is second 13 in the first quarter against the Raiders. We're in 11 personnel, two by two. This is against a five-man front. Drop down, safety comes down, so now you've got a three-deep look. Number 22, Derrick Henry, comes across the formation. Ben Jones, Nate Davis, watch them take some great, great blocks downfield. Number 22 juggles the catch just a little bit, but he's got an excellent convoy, 23-yard game. This is executed very, very very well. The blocks are in perfect position and everybody is involved in this big game. Next play we're going to look at, this is against the Indianapolis Colts. Now this is first and ten in the first quarter. Now the Titans are in a trips bunch right, all right, with a numbers minus three split on the left side. There, this is an eight-man front. The, the running back is now out of play action strong. Henry looks open after the fake. Nice, nice bump by Jones and Brewer. Timing is perfect. The two defensive ends are up the field. Swain gives a nice front side protection. Ben Jones, Davis are downfield. Nick Westbrook, Aquina again showing up downfield block. Great job of everything working together for the run. Another 22-yard gain for the Tennessee Titans in this play. Next screen we're going to look at is against the Commanders. We are now in 21 personnel, two running backs, one tight end, two wide receivers. I right formation. This is a five-man front from the Commanders with the two high safety. This screen is going to come off of a split zone throwback look to the open side. Brewer with a beautiful block to get it started. Perfect timing. Ben Jones again out front. Carter, Radens also downfield, plus 24. This play right here will set up the next excellent screen we're going to look at. You can see now that the Tennessee Titans offense is built a repertoire of screens that daisy chain one off of the other. Our last look. Now this is first and 10th, the plus 13 yard line. This is 21 personnel. It's two running backs in the game. They're in red or split back formation. Henry motions to the tight end side, draws the defense with him because Derrick Henry is a big focal point of this offense. Defense is drawn to him. Tannehill pumps to Henry. Timing is excellent. This is a throwback to Hilliard on the open side. Ben Jones and Brewer again. Perfect throws downfield and the thing that they do so well, they combo up for First of all, off of the tackle, then they get downfield. Left tackle Dennis Daly does a nice job of drawing Montez Sweat up the field. This is a very clear lane for Hilliard. This is a touchdown. This play came directly off of the setup of the previous play that we just saw. Tennessee Titans are doing an excellent job in their screen game so far this season. Look for them to build upon these concepts as we continue in the 2022 season. I love beneath the surface, but I also love the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're getting ready for right now. Let's do it. All right, so the Tennessee Titans are hosting homecoming week, but they are not just honoring former Titans, they're also honoring former Oilers. Do you like that decision? And why is that so important? Well, I absolutely like that decision because the Oilers and the Titans are the same. We're the same organization. When Mr. Adams moved the team to Nashville, the name Oilers was retired, but the history went with us. And so if you look at our record book, you'll find Dan Pastorini and Warren Moon and Kenny Burrow and Curly Culp and all of those guys as part of our history. So it's only fitting that this Sunday when we host Homecoming, there will be Oilers and there will be Titans, but they were all the same. They're all our players and we're excited to have them. Great decision. And they're all going to be there to watch the Titans take on the Colts. Ready for it. Ready for it. And you know who else is ready for it? General Manager John Robinson. He's going to stop by a little bit later to preview that matchup. The second matchup between the two teams. But up next, 
It's time for the Nissan Insider, the large one himself, Big Jeff. Jeffrey Simmons, next on Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Now, it's no secret that Jeffrey Simmons is having a monster season, and so he's a natural fit for this week's Nissan Insider. He's sitting down with Mike Keith, and he says that while he is motivated by a lot of things, it's a promise he made in 2019 to Titans fans that really keeps him going. I will help this team win the Super Bowl. That's my promise to you guys. Under pressure, hit, sack! What a play by Big Jeff! Most guys, the day after they get drafted, aren't talking about how priority one is win the Super Bowl, but you said that in there. Like I said, the ultimate goal each and every year is to win the Super Bowl. Um, you know, there's only one team that does that each and every year. You know, it's my job to keep you know, um, trying to do my part, I mean, especially on the defensive side and, and just in the locker room off the field, the leader I could be, you know, just the, the small detail things that we could, you know, do better as a team to get over that small little hump because, you know, we so close each and every year since I've been here. You know, it's not a year, I mean, I've been here three years, one on four now. Each and each year I've been in the playoff. Uh, so uh, we have we have chances. It's just just the small things, like I said, just to get over that hump, and um, hopefully it's this year. A lot of people would have thought you just would have said that that day to play to the audience, but we've come to know you meant that 100. percent Takes confidence to say that, though. Some people would say, "Oh, that's too big a, a goal to put out there," but you were never afraid to do that. Why? I mean, because I know me personally, I, I hate to lose. Um, you know, I. I grew up a winner, being a winner. Um, you know, in high school, I, me, I, I won three state championships in high school. Being around around winners, you know, even with, when I got here with Coach Brave, you know, I could tell he wanted to win. You know, when you have guys like Coach Brave and you know the all coaching staff that, you know, you go out there, you want to win for them guys because they get you prepared, they coach you hard, they into it with you. You know, uh, they always say it's kind of like a domino effect when you rub that up into your teammates and um, have that type of energy and positive mindset around your teammates. It's kind of everyone started, you know, gelling together and be like, we can really do this. Let's go out there and dominate from start to finish, man. That talk and that do it. Hey, together on three, one, two, three. One of the things I like to see most in sports is when a guy gets hot and you think about Steph Curry playing basketball. When he starts putting up threes, you know it's going in. Did it feel that way for you, getting hot in that Rams game last year when you started sacking the quarterback? Like, every time you rushed the passer. And when I hit that field, you know, I just felt like we was going to gel together as a team, you know. And, and like I said, it wasn't just me, you know. I, like some, one, I remember one of the sacks that I got, the Nico had a great rush on the other guard and made Stafford set, uh, step up in the pocket, and I got the sack. So, um, of course, like, you know, I had three sacks, but, you know, to be honest, all the problems go to the guys around me. Even on the, um, the, the pick David got in the end zone, like when I had him wrapped up, he threw it. It's just all, we ran a game, all three of us um, guys who ran the game was on the same page. What is it like when you feel like there is nobody in the world that can stop you? I feel like that every time I step on the field, honestly. I mean, my, my, my mindset, I, I just want to be dominant. I want to take the field with a uh, mentality that, you know, I want to scare people, you know, I want to scare people that when I take the field, like they be like, okay, he coming to play today. And every time that offensive lineman look over, you know, I want him to think like he coming. I have to bring my best each and every snap. Every year you've played in the league, you've gotten better. If you've gotten better in 2022, at the end of the year, what will have happened for Jeffrey Simmons? My goal is to help create more turnovers on our defense because that was one of our emphasis coming out last year. We have to get the ball more. So if I could get a strip set, if I could create a batted ball to get a uh, create an interception, it's things like that where, you know, that's going to help us get over them small humps, like more turnovers. So I feel like just my dominance being um, attacked, attacked the offensive line each and every snap, you know, not taking no plays off, you know, all the other stuff going to come. but. I mean, I'm standing on it. My end goal is to try to win the Super Bowl here. 
Remember all of three weeks ago when the Titans took on the Indianapolis Colts and got the win at Lucas Oil Stadium? Well, now they're coming here to Nissan Stadium, and the Titans are looking to go 2-0 in the AFC South. So Titans General Manager John Robinson is going to be here to give us the keys to getting that win. Stick around. Time to talk ball with John Robinson, presented by Duncan. You had the bye, so you played two weeks ago against Washington. Where do you hope the Titans have improved the most in those two weeks? I think it's the details and the fundamentals that, you know, happen in every single play. You know, the players aren't going to be perfect snap after snap after snap, but if they can understand the details of what each play is trying to accomplish uh, and then go out and execute those plays, with the fundamentals and the techniques that we coach, that we know when, I think the overall consistency of our football team will improve. Colts, the opponent this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Since you played them on October 2nd, they have clawed out, come from behind wins at Denver and over Jacksonville. What has stood out to you the most about the Colts in those two weeks? Yeah, I think it's those tough, gritty performances that they've just stayed in games uh, and kept scratching and clawing, as you alluded to. You know, four of their of their last game, their last four games have all been one score games, uh, and they find we've talked before about the four or five plays that you know come up in a game that generally determine the outcome of, of the of the game. And the Indy has found a way to make those four or five plays. Is Matt Ryan easily coming off his best performance as a Colt? Yeah, I thought he played really well. You know, I think he threw it 58 times, uh, three touchdowns, no you know no interceptions. He took care of the ball well. I think he completed 72% of his passes. I thought the O-line protected well, the receivers got open. Uh, he did a really nice job distributing the football and that throw, you know, that last one to Pierce at the end of the game you know, to win it with less than 20 seconds on third down was a heck of a throw. The defensive tackle who's so dominant, DeForest Buckner, last two games, three sacks, he's back on track, right? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's one of the premium defensive tackles uh, in the National Football League. He's long, he's quick, he's fast, he's got range. Um, he's a really instinctive player. Um, whether it's defending the run or rushing the passer, he factors uh, on most plays. I'd say every opponent that plays Indy, uh, the offensive staff certainly have him circled as a guy they got to take care of. What do you have to do better against the Indianapolis Colts Sunday at Nissan Stadium than you did at Indy on October 2nd? Well, I think defensively, Mike, it's eliminating those chunk plays. Uh, in that first game, uh, we gave up 365 yards total for the game. Uh, unfortunately, 151 of those yards came on five plays. So those big chunk plays where they eat up tons of yardage in only one play, well, we've got to eliminate those. Uh, and then offensively, it's it's being better on third down, especially in the second half. I thought we did a lot of good things in the first half, moving the football, uh, but we've got to sustain drives in the second uh, half, keep the football, get it down to the red zone and score points. Finally, Delaney Walker announced his retirement as a Titan earlier this week on Tuesday. What did he mean to the team most during that period for you? Super talented, unique skill set, um, a great guy in the locker room. He was a leader. Um, he was a guy that when a play needed to be made, uh, his number certainly was at the top of the list of guys to get the ball to, uh, to make that play. Really thankful for all he's done for the organization and the community. Let's take a look at Delaney Walker's special day as he retires as a Titan. What do you think, Delaney, your legacy is with this team in this town? Um, my legacy? That's that's a that's a good question. A lot of fans who would say your legacy is the best tight end this team's ever had. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, oh, Big Jet, thanks for coming out, man. Good to see you. Good Thank you very much. Jeez, that's, that's where I was at. Yeah, that's nice. They got the shield and everything. You know I had to keep a hat. You were always the last one out. Always the last one out. Man, remember all this. It's, it just feel good to be going through it. Everybody running. And we always tell them, man, who got it better than us? Nobody. We get to play on Sundays. It's game time, baby. Game time. You ain't feel them to call your name. You be in that tunnel just thinking about it. We gotta eat today. And then I come to the camera, I'll be like, man, you came here for two reasons. Chew bubble gum and kick some ass. We all out of bubble gum. And then I go out here, you hear what I'm saying? What is it? That's that. We digging on them. 
We digging on them. We digging. On Thursday, the Titans invited season ticket members who have survived cancer to a crucial catch luncheon at Nissan Stadium. Hosted by the voice of the Titans, Mike Keith. To win. Snap. Set. Kick on the way. Good! The program included a celebration of Rob Baronis' record-setting eight field goal day against the Houston Texans 15 years ago. Titans, Colts, Nissan Stadium this Sunday. We've got your Titans game ticket. Here's what you need to know about Sunday's game. Well, Mike, Titans fans can expect a little bit of everything when they come out to the crucial catch game this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. You'll want to make sure you're in your seats early to partake in all of the pregame Oilers Titans homecoming festivities, including Dan Pastorini and Delaney Walker as the game's 12th Titan. The first 17,000 fans through the gates will get foam swords, and the community drive of the game is pet supplies. Pet supplies, that's outstanding. It really is. Maybe Adam Strunk loves helping the pets. Absolutely. So bring all of your dog food and your dog's old leashes. And cat food. And cat food. There you we go. like cats too. Maybe Wells, Rhett, Brian will have Titans Countdown on Titans Radio stations throughout the Mid South. There are exactly 50 of them, as a matter of fact. On the air at 11 a.m. Central, kickoff 12.02 at Nissan Stadium Titans Colts Part 2 this weekend. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for watching Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.